Rabies is caused by lysiviruses in the rhabdovirus family. Lysiviruses are usually confined to one major reservoir species in a given geographic area, although spillover to other species is common. To date, greater than 16 different lysiviruses have been described. Globally, rabies virus is the most important member of the genus. Rabies is an acute progressive viral encephalomyelitis that principally affects carnivores and bats, although any mammal can be affected. Around the world, the dog is the most significant reservoir, particularly in developing countries. Generally, the name of mammalian species acting as the reservoir is used to describe the type of rabies from an epidemiologic standpoint. Accordingly, rabies maintained by a dog-to-dog -dog transmission is termed canine rabies, and rabies in a dog originating from another mammal, for example skunk, would be referred to as skunk rabies in a dog. Usually, saliva is infectious at the time clinical signs occur, but domestic dogs, cats, and ferrets may shed virus for several days before onset of clinical signs. Other mammals may excrete virus for even longer before illness. The incubation period is both prolonged and variable. Virus often remains at the inoculation site for a considerable time, partially explaining the utility of post or human post-exposure prophylaxis by local infiltration of rabies immunoglobulin and vaccine. Most rabies cause um, cases develop within 4 to 12, 12 weeks, but in one reported human case of rabies, the incubation time exceeded 8 years. Within North America, virus variants in red and arctic foxes are commonly associated with disease in Canada and Alaska. Raccoons serve as the main reservoir along the east coast, and gray foxes commonly serve this role in the southwest. Most recent human cases of rabies in the U.S. have been associated with bat rabies, and bat rabies is distributed through, throughout the Americas. There are three rabies virus variants in skunks in the U.S., and bats have many different viral variants. Cats are the most common domestic species affected with rabies in the U.S. Cats, either domestic or wild, don't seem to be the reservoirs, but are effective vectors. People have developed rabies following cat bites. In the last 30 years, raccoons have become a reservoir of greater significance. Canine rabies has been eliminated in Mexico through mass vaccination campaigns. The vampire bat is an important reservoir throughout Latin America and has been associated with large numbers of cases of rabies in livestock. Insectivorous bats are important reservoirs of rabies throughout Europe. In Western Europe, red fox rabies was eliminated by oral vaccination. In Eastern Europe, rabies occurs in raccoons, dogs, and wolves. Wildlife serving as reservoirs in other parts of the world include the mongoose in the Caribbean, Southern Africa, and parts of Asia, jackals in Africa, marmosets in Brazil, ferret badgers in China. Rodents and lagomorphs rarely constitute a risk of exposure to rabies virus. Regardless of species, the disease is fatal once clinical signs appear. During the prodromal period, which can last up to three days, animals show only vague clinical signs. The disease progresses rapidly after the onset of paralysis and death is virtually certain a few days thereafter. Some animals may die rapidly without obvious clinical signs. Regardless of species, most rabies cases are characterized by acute behavioral changes, such as loss of appetite, irritability, ataxia, change in vocalization, and progressive paralysis. Aggressive or vicious behavior, that is furious rabies, 
may occur, but it is not always seen. Abnormal behavior by a wild animal, including loss of fear of, of humans or daytime appearance of uh, a nocturnal animal, should raise suspicion for rabies in that animal. If paralysis but not behavioral changes are prominent, the term used is dumb or paralytic rabies. Such paralysis often causes profuse salivation and inability to swallow. Anyone examining the mouth of such an animal without gloves may expose themselves to rabies virus. Significant species variation in presenting signs must be considered by veterinary clinicians, and any unexplained central nervous system disease in an animal with potential exposure should be considered suspect. Rabies is found throughout the world, but a few island countries, like in Pacific Oceania, have enforced rigorous quarantine regulations for mammals and claim to be free of the disease. Mass vaccination of dogs and promotion of responsible pet ownership has the greatest potential for cost-effective long-term elimination of rabies. Comprehensive guidelines for prevention in dogs have been prepared internationally by the World Health Organization and in the U.S. by the National Association of State Public Health Veterinarians include the following. One, notification of suspected cases and euthanasia of dogs with clinical signs and rapid diagnostic testing. Two, reduction of contact rates between susceptible dogs by leash laws dog movement control, and quarantine. Three, mass immunization of dogs by campaigns and by continuing vaccination of young dogs. Four, stray dog control and euthanasia of unvaccinated dogs with low levels of dependency on or restriction by people. And five, dog registration. Many effective, effective vaccines such as modified live virus, recombinant and inactivated types are available worldwide. No modified live rabies vaccines are currently marketed in the US. Recommended vaccination frequency is every three years after initial series of two vaccines one year apart. Because of the increasing importance of rabies in cats, vaccination of cats is now highly recommended. Only oral vaccines have been approved for use in wildlife. For people in high-risk groups, such as veterinarians and veterinary technicians, animal control officers and diagnostic laboratory workers, and possibly travelers working in countries in which canine rabies is enzootic, pre-exposure vaccination with a cell culture-based vaccine is recommended, even if vaccinated, if exposed to a rabid animal, supplementation with a regimen of two doses of vaccine on day zero and three post-exposure is recommended. However, if an unvaccinated person is bitten by a rabid animal, recommended treatment consists of wound care, local infiltration of rabies immunoglobulin, and vaccine administration on days 0, 3, 7, and 14 post-exposure in the U.S. Timely post-exposure prophylaxis virtually assures human survival. The preventive vaccination approach represents a one health approach to disease prevention and control, leading to simultaneously better health outcomes for animal and humankind as Prevention in common vector species is crucial.